Hello, everyone. I'm Clayton Davis from Awards Editor of Variety. Thank you for joining us today for this wonderful conversation. I'm joined with Benjamin Lopez, Anna, uh, Anna, Christ, uh, sorry, Anna Christina Ramon, and Yvette Rodriguez. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We're talking about some very important issues surrounding our Latino community all around the world. How's everyone doing today? Great. Great. How are you? Thank Good. you so much. Uh, me and uh, Benjamin are uh, rocking the Roma backgrounds uh, in the corner. So that's uh, every, everyone missed the memo. It's fine. Um, <laughs> no, but I, I, w- I want to start this conversation uh, about uh, about Latinos in, in media and in Hollywood and how it's being affected with a, with a very known fact of this internal civil war that's happening within the Latino community that is preventing us from having real change occur in our absence in media. I did an interview with John Leguizamo last year and very eloquently he said and passionately talked about if we're 30%, 35% of the, of the box office, 20% of the population contribute $4 trillion you know, to the GDP and the economy, we just want what's ours. We're not asking for any more. We just want to be represented in that space. Um, just recently, there was a so- social media where all good conversations happen, right? There's a very uh, heated debate on just the term Latinx from Latinos, like really going at about whether or not to use the term. What is What are everyone's thoughts on this issue and what can we do to get to a place where we can start communicating once again. I think the communication barrier has broken down, but I'll leave it up to anyone to jump in first or I'll kick it over to Anna because I know she has some nice uh, facts and figures to share. <laughs> yeah, we're a very um, diverse community, obviously. So we represent all races. Um, we come from all different countries and including the United States, you know, like where some of us, the borders crossed, you know, our families, right? So um, a lot of people have been here for generations. And so, so we just um, have a very diverse community, but when you, when you look at our representation on screen, you see that it's very limited, very one-dimensional and usually very stereotypical. And so so that's where I think the understanding of who we are gets lost with like, you know, just the, the outside, um, you know, beyond in the mainstream. And so, uh, so then that's, that's like a huge um, problem in terms of where we can, you know, kind of see ourselves and, and, and how, how we get um, represented and how, what's, what the decisions that the studios are making. And so when you look at the numbers, you see that, you know, we are like the latest census numbers show that we're 18.7% of the population, but um, on screen and film, we're still uh, less than 6% of the main cast in the top films. And then when you look at the leads, we're only about like 5% and so of, of film leads. And, 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 you know, that's really, really, an, you know, such a severe underrepresentation. And so um, that's obviously a big issue. Yeah. Okay. Do you wanna um, yes, I, I, we're, we're, Hollywood and the media have been perpetuating um, who we are, telling our stories. And unfortunately, a, a great group of us have been completely erased from that. And so that's where that internal conflict comes from because we, 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 we feel so unseen. And so we're all fighting for this little crumb that, 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 is, that, that they want to give us, right? Not the 18.7 or 6%, but just this little crumb. And so, and, and so we're starving. We're starving for, to see our images, to hear our stories. And I think that that's where you know, the problem lies and I feel like we're fighting amongst ourselves when in fact, we should have grace for one another, hold hands and really put pressure where it belongs. And that is with the media and with the studios and the people that are making decisions and that are spending money that are keeping us from having a seat at the table in both the green lighting room and in consumer facing decision rooms. 
And so while we should continue fighting and having these really uncomfortable conversations and hearing each other and seeing each other, because, you know, you break down the percentage of who we are as Latinos, whether, you know, obviously Mexicans being the largest group and, and then Puerto Ricans and vice, you know, and down, you know, the rest of the, the community, but it's like, we need to have those conversations, but let's have them amongst ourselves and let's all get together and let's go and let's, you know, put the pressure where it belongs. I think that that's where we can see impact. Ben? Yeah, I, I think we're in a really exciting era. I, I see it from that perspective. I think that uh, um, we're, we're in the middle of figuring out how to best identify ourselves. Right now, I, th I think this pan-Latino um, um, present that we're seeking, it's not there yet. Uh, but I do see that every conversation is leading to, to us having a deeper dialogue, even with our own families. Because the moment you bring up how we call ourselves, even within our own families, it's conversations that you're allowed to have. And I think it's important that even in those conversations, how many times have we excluded the Afro-Latinx perspective, right? So that's something that's the elephant that's been in the room for a very long time. And I think it's important to address it even with our abuelitas, right? Even with our nanas, we got to be able to say, hey, nana, you know, what is that? You know, why is it that in growing up, uh, you know, we didn't see typically if because they grew up watching a lot of telenovelas, right, specifically from specific networks, especially here in the U.S., right? And so why is it that we didn't have a lot of indigenous or, or Afro-Latinx representation, it, not just in characters' background, but actually as lead characters? And then also us growing up in whatever generation, whether you're 1.5 generation or immigrant generation, why is it that the mainstream characters, it's also lacking? And you can see it in the numbers by Dr. Dr. Ramon. So I'm encouraged by the dialogue too. I think it's important to, yes, I agree with, with what Yvette is saying. It's like, we need to work on this dialogue, but at the same time, do not, let's not take the eye off the price and the goals that we need to achieve systemically to change this industry step by step. So I am encouraged by what we're achieving, but we need to do it at, at a much higher level. Um, so we need to pull people up with us. So not just being able to point out this was lacking or that was missing, but I love it when people suggest a solution. When people are saying data-driven, solutions-based strategies, that drives me completely like, I'm in, like, okay, great. So you have a criticism about this, but then what is your solution? Or what do you think it could be? Because you can ask that question because sometimes people don't know. But now when you say, I think we need to create an incubator or an accelerator to identify the next generation creative executives that can make the decisions and be the actual content buyers. Um, oh, okay, that's a little bit more defined. That's great. And who are we targeting to be those decision makers and so on and so on. So I think it's, it's important for us to be first on the same page there and then making sure that when we propose strategies to engage this industry to make sure we have clear goals because the industry at large is looking at Latinos and they're like, so what are you proposing? You know, how do you want to make it? How many members do you think the AMPAS can take from the Latino side, the U.S. Latino side versus um, Latin America and Spain? Um, what's, what's going on with the Golden Gloves and so on and so on? We need to have representation everywhere, right? And so I think it's important for us to have, I love goals and numbers and metrics. So I'm a big fan of, of, of my two colleagues here in, in this space. Um, and just to have a, you know, we're going to bring, open this up into a general conversation. I think one of the things I feel that lacks is just a general understanding of Latinos and what a Latino is. Like I remember starting here on Variety and having a very frank conversation with the publicist. And I was, uh, I was critical of Penelope Cruz's casting in the upcoming 355 movie as a Colombian. Mm -hmm. And, you know, someone had told me, they were like, but, but she speaks Spanish. I was like, that is not that does that's not the defining characteristic of us exactly. um but you can't but that's the thing i think we, hollywood even latinos ourselves i think we've been so quick to try to generalize 500 million people and you can't we span every continent we come in different color shape sizes <laughs> you know and our experiences are different we're probably the most dynamic of all uh the you know the ethnicities and races that are out there so how can we get people to acknowledge that, you know, so then we can stop saying that, like, you know, it's not just J-Lo, you know, Tessa Thompson is as an Afro-Latina, you know, uh, we had an Afro-Latino nominated for Best Picture last year that did not come up in conversation, Shaka King, who directed Judas and the Black Messiah, and no one 
from the Latino community that I could see at large was coming out and like saying, yeah, we got one of our own in, you know, th that's, we need more of that. Cause I feel like there's not enough people seeing that everyone's experience is different, but we're all on the same team. I don't, I don't know what your thoughts are on that or if it's anyone. Same for Janice Cabral. I, I can take that one like really quick. Janiska Jan is someone that that we, you know, we have been claiming for a very long time, but it's still you have to make the point every single time that we're very proud of the work she's doing, very proud of the, the work that Shaka is doing. And Jerome, like all these folks that are getting their their flowers right now and they're achieving amazing things in the industry. Um, but they also there has to be a consistent history, right? It couldn't, it, it can't just be Johnny come lately that now we're claiming them. It needs to be very organic. It needs to be built and not just recognize the Shaka Kings, but also making sure that we're, we're pulling up the next generation of Shaka Kings. And most importantly, I personally want to see more boardrooms at the highest level of media and entertainment, those boardrooms, I want to see what they're, do they, do we have Alpha Latinx there? Do we, you know, uh, let's just say you do a breakdown on most of the studios across different business units and find out who are the people truly in power. Right now, most of the studios are, are putting out uh, a lot of uh, reports, self-reports, working with consultants, and then you're going to see the number of employees total, but they're also now trying to look at how many people are actually like VPs or presidents or management and above, and then you can see that number dwindled to very similar to the numbers that Dr. Ramon brought up. So I think we need to work on all those things at the same time. Now wait until we're like, okay, we finally have enough writers. Maybe we could go for the showrunners and maybe we could, no, we need to work on all of it at the same time. That's my take. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ramon, I remember uh, having a conversation with you and you talked about the, you know, the, the psychological positivities of being able to see yourself on screen and what that does for the Latino community. Can you speak to that a little bit about, you know, yeah, why definitely. just, just that general uh, feeling that people I think undervalue besides the bottom line. Yeah, definitely. So, you know, television in particular acts as a socialization agent. And so, you know, there's been research um, that's looking, that's been looking at it since like the seventies. Right. And, and it just shows that, um, that, when you watch as you know much television as as we all watch and television now includes you know streaming and so forth um it actually affects like your ideas of how the world works and your place in it and what happens is that when you when you see something represented over and over again it actually leads to this acceptance and so you believe you begin to believe that certain things are true right and so uh, Oftentimes people will say, well, I know the difference between reality and entertainment and what I, you know, watch on TV and I can separate it, but it actually happens in a very subtle and covert way so that people don't really know how to differentiate it. So, um, you know, you can remember shows that you grew up with and it almost feels like your own experience, right? So you can remember particular episodes and they almost become part of your memories as like something that you experienced yourself. And so, so that's, that's what I think people don't fully understand. And, and I always kind of give it before actually what happened um, last year with like, um, you know, kind of protests um, and, and demanding racial justice and social justice. I used to always give this example that like people, um, they, after watching so many TV shows about cops that you, that you kind of, I think people assume that they knew what law enforcement was like. And, and a lot of the talk that came out of last year was like this propaganda, right? And so it's actually the, the TV shows have been promoting this particular view, perspective about law enforcement, right? And so, so that was like always like an example I would give, right? So we either be cops or doctors. And so that I think that it, when, when, you, when you ask anybody, you know, they, they think like, oh, I know, I know how doctors are because you've been watching shows for so many years, right? And it's like, oh, I know how detectives work. Like yeah. I know that whole process because I watched so much Law and Order, right? And it's like, no, you actually don't know. And so, you know, so, it, but it's like this, this idea. And so that, that just shows how embedded that is like these models and, uh, and these tropes, right? And, and they become part of your idea of how the world works. And when you pull in the idea of like stereotypes, right? So it's like if, if, if one group is represented in a very limited way and the same way over and over again, then you can imagine that people 
who don't ever interact with Latinos on a, like just a regular basis, they could begin to think that, oh yeah, you know, that's those Latinos are just like a bunch of gang members or they're in a cartel or something like that. And so, so they, they would begin to think that that is how we are. Right. And so, so that's, that's where you can see that. And like, the last thing I'll say is that there's this really powerful kind of um, definition of what it means to not be represented in media. And that's called um, symbolic annihilation. So I, I, you know, before this past year, I would um, always talk about like for Native Americans, um, how, you know, their representation was like virtually, you know, non-existent, right, in, in media. And they even had done studies like five years ago where they, sh they, they asked people, um, you know, if they, if they think that Native Americans exist today and 40% thought, oh, no, they don't exist. And because they were always represented in a historical, you know, period piece. And so it almost seemed like they don't exist, you know, today. And obviously, you know, we see these great shows that have come out this year that show their everyday existence and how important it is. But you can say that, you know, there's this symbolic annihilation that has happened to many groups. And I would say that, you know, Native Americans for sure, and for Latinos, you know, that's that's a big issue for us as well. Um, Yvette, as someone who works in publicity, and you and I have had very frank conversations about uh, kind of the state of media, the state of Hollywood, when the Golden Globes had their moment, or they're, had, they're still in the middle of their moment, but when they had their moment, yes, Golden Globes, had problems, but we're not the problem with Hollywood. We've spoken a lot about that. Like we're, we're pointing the finger often at the wrong people. And I think you spoke at the beginning of this saying, you know, the boardrooms, who's green lighting these projects? Are there Latinos in the room? Are there any other, some of everyone in the room? You know, it's, it's easy to blame a group and then not associate the problem. I always felt like the Oscars, HFP, everyone has been used as a scapegoat to what the problem actually is. So I didn't know if you wanted to speak to that. Uh, you're on mute also, by the way. Oh, you're on you're, Sorry, oh, I'm on mute. Sure, sure, go ahead. Um, I feel like, um, number one, the system that we're all operating under, whether you're white, whatever you are, we none of us created this system. We're all operating under the system, right? And so it's got, so the fact, um, the, the HFPA situation for me was like an opening to have a bigger conversation that I could not believe could be really had on that level. And unfortunately, you know, the media is not represented. The, the, the folks that have covered this, you know, say for yourself really have, but all been white people covering the HFPA Golden Globes, you know, like, so they, you know, so that's again, that we're erased from the narrative, you know? Um, so how do I feel about it? I mean, I, I, I think that, and I forgot the actual question, but um, I, I mean, Hollywood it has a really big problem, and that is that um, is that it's being run by all by people that look the same, speak the same, come from the same backgrounds. And until we are in all of those rooms, we're not going to see the change that we're seeking. And but I think the the thing that happened with HFPA was certainly a good opportunity to 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 you know to to talk about this, but it's a lot bigger. And until Hollywood actually does something and not just put out press release after press release announcing multi-million dollar funds that we don't know where they're really going and we don't see at the end of the day the the numbers right so the numbers don't lie Dr. Ramon will tell you that like these are the numbers so you can say whatever you're saying and talk about whatever program you're doing but the at the end of the day here are the numbers it doesn't work However, what does work is when you walk into your office, take a look around and see who's in that room. If they look like you, first failure. Second, make sure that it's representative of the country in which we live in and in the world in which we live in. You know, so make it easy. Like 30% of that room should look like us, period. That's it. So start doing that. And, and we're going to see this, the acceleration of progress for our communities as soon as Hollywood actually puts their, you know, actually does that. That's that's my, my two cents. <laughs> um, uh, Dr. Romano, if you don't mind me asking you uh, a question here in terms of the, in terms of the diversity conversation that we're having in Hollywood right now. And I don't, and, I, and I, I'm hopeful for this conversation that we're having, 
But I remember having a frank conversation recently. I've been having a lot of frank conversations lately. But one late uh, recently was the real diversity that I'm, I'm going to say we're talking about. I'm going to speak for myself that Clayton Davis brings up and talks about. I won't be alive to see because the diversity I'm talking about is not just getting Latinos in movies and directing stuff, which is great, important, but about doing some outreach to Latino communities like a Clayton Davis that came from Bronx, New York, never stepped foot in a film class in, mm-hmm. in elementary school, high school, or college, and kind of by accident found his way to where I am now so that I can leave the door open for someone else to come through. And it could be a deliberate choice and not lucky like I have been. That diversity conversation, that long-term goal, I feel like we are not speaking about often enough. Am I off base there? Is that kind of where we should be looking at? Definitely. That's, that's a huge issue. Um, And we talked about um, this a little bit in our, in our qualitative research in terms of like getting um, at the, getting people in at the entry level, right. And the pipeline issue, because you know, oftentimes Hollywood will say like, oh, well, you know, where are the Latinos? Like, where are you supposed supposed to get, um, find them? And it's like, well, we're out there, we're talented, right? And it's not a pool problem, but you have to like help people, support people, get them, you know, in there. And, you know, that that, um, pay up Hollywood, right? Issue was, is is still ongoing um, because the people that, you know, come from, underrepresented communities are of, often underserved, right? And they, they have financial issues. And so, so that's, that's one part of it. But also, like you said, the, the knowledge, the, the experience being like growing up in that, in the world of like, that this is a possibility, that's also very important. And like, you know, with the Latino Film Institute, the work that they do with the youth cinema, um, program is like is really is really important because they they um, you know go to the schools they actually include this um, curriculum as part of like just the standard curriculum where they teach students how to become filmmakers so from beginning of the year to the end the the students work in groups and then they actually create their own film right and then they they get to see that film showcased on the big screen. And so that, you know, teaches them, it's given them like a lot of like self-esteem and like all these, you know, social emotional skills that are really important. So they become lifelong learners, but also now they can go to that next level and say, oh, I know how to make a movie. You know, I, I know what it means to do this. Um, and so, so that's something that's, that's really, I think, exciting and that needs to be kind of done you know, in, in a, in, in a larger scale. Right. So that, that's, that's a big part of it. Cause, cause that is, like you said, the only way that like, we're really gonna kind of, you know, take over and be yeah. throughout. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, ben, uh, you, you do a lot of outreach with the uh, uh, Latinos in, in media and journalism, all 12 of us, it feels like, but like, <laughs> but um a lot of the opportunities there is the assumption that Latino journalists or Latinos in media can only talk about Latino films or Latino TV. And one thing I feel like I've been trying to get rid of and perpetuating this, get rid of the stereotype that like, I can only talk about Latino things and black things as I'm Puerto Rican and black. I was like, no, like we want to be able to talk about everything just like the white people have been talking about everything for all of entertainment history. Are you seeing any changes that way or what can we do to push that conversation forward? Because we can change the Hollywood sphere, but if it's still the same people talking about it, it's not going to reach where we need it to. Yeah, there's a lot of work to be done in this specific space. Uh, one example uh, that encourages me is like, for example, the accessibility of Sundance of uh, pro- uh, programmers, film critics, and ent- entertainment journalists of colors that were giving scholarships to attend the festivals and actually be able to watch the films. The issue was that not every single person that attended or people that should have gotten access to specific films 
they didn't get access to mainstream films. They were mostly getting access to the ones that were Latino facing, brown facing, POS, BIPOC, right? So there, there's more work needs to be done, but I am encouraged by that festival. Um, for example, in a, in a couple of weeks, you're going to have the Telluride, Telluride Film Festival, one of the most important film festivals in North America for the premiere or prestige type of films, for the type of films that happen to be in the conversation for the awards, right? How many Latinos, U.S. based, U.S. born, U.S. raised Latinos do you think will actually attend? I can count the people working behind the scenes in that festival, volunteering, by the way. Full disclosure, I've been volunteering for that festival for the last, I want to say, 17 years. And guess what? I can count the Latinos with one man hand that actually are behind the scenes at that festival. I can tell you the film critics, because I used to work in the press desk back in the day at that festival, and I could count with my hands how many, I, I wanted to say US-based Latinos, no, mostly Latin American folks that were covering on behalf of the trades. People can't afford to go to those festivals. They can't even go to Con or, or you know, the, uh, the Venice experience. And so if we don't have US Latinos, not just with their film showcasing, but also the ones covering those, those actual films, we, we, there's a gap there. And that's why I love metrics. I love being able to measure what are the, if we had those gaps, what would make a difference to make sure that in a very, what is it like a, a very focused amount of time, how can we accelerate that representation in that space to actually make a difference? So I, to be honest, the it answer is right in front of us. We need more at least 20, 30, 40 Clayton Davis editors basically spread all over the trades. We need that representation, right? With all the totality and, 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 and the spectrum of representative Latinos. So we need more of you out there because you're gonna be able to assign stories. You're gonna be able to be, you're gonna understand the difference, just like you mentioned, between Penelope Cruz, who happens to be a Spaniard. She played a Colombian before, obviously in Johnny Depp's movie, you know, blow, uh, all of that. But yet you will, you'll know the difference, the nuances. And I think we need more people like you in that room. And another thing that we need to think about is, the time, right? When? Because we're always saying, cuando, cuando va a pasar? When are we ever going to make that difference? Well, there was a study on the on, on women representation executives here on the on the at least on the U.S. level of North America, and when they did a, a study on when women and the, this is including white women would eventually catch up in the executive suite or even in the workplace, just talking about parity or pay, and the calculations was over two hundred years. This is including white women. So imagine what the number looks like for Latinos in this space. We're not even represented. And when we are represented, I, I have met several Latinos that have been assistants for eight years working for a major studio. Why are they still assistants? They should be managers. They should be on their way to becoming president of, of companies. So the answer is staring right in front of us. Uh, like, like what Dr. Ramon said, we're hiding in plain sight. There's this annihilation. They don't even see us in the room. We're their assistants. We're the ones fetching the coffee. We have been learning in the background for years, but yet we don't get a promotion. We're not getting hired. So instead of complaining, we're going to make our case. You know what's going to happen? You're going to have more Robert Rodriguez, more Asi Aruz, more Eva Longoria, more people like that. They're going to start their own companies and they have been and they're packaging their own movies and they're taking venture capital. And guess what? The next Hello Sunshine is going to be a Latina. How much you want to bet that that's going to be a Latina and it's going to create a brand that's going to be like, oh, the Latina Oprah, the Latina. No, it's going to be a Latina with an amazing brand. And yes, it's going to sell and exit at $400 million level and above. That's what we need. Yeah. All right. I hope I'm there for that. And I hope everyone finds better Clayton Davises out there for their <laughs> trades because we need yes. four of you. Do, 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 do better than Clayton. Yeah, it was fine. Um, my last question for all of you, and it's always the most important one, call to action, some action steps. Got to do some work because we can talk about this all day. And I hear and I, there are professional complainers on, on the Internet about the things that are wrong with no set solutions. So what can we do to what can we do immediately to start working towards this change? And I'll start with Dr. Ramon. Uh, what, 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 what's the action step you think we can ta all take? Um, I think that, you know, as being as a consumer of entertainment, that everyone can play a role, right? So, so it's really important that um, that everyone feel that that kind of power, right? Because then that's that collective power that we need. So, so as Latinos, you know, we we need to demand like what we want to see and talk about it, and know that if you're on social media, you do have a voice, right? Because nowadays that is like something that is big. Not everyone is on social media. 
but it does have an influence on studios and networks because you know their PR is very important, their image is very important to them. And so, so I think that you know anybody who consumes, like just who you know, if you're not in the industry, you you are part of it, right? By being um, a viewer, by you know buying movie tickets. And so, so I think that people need to know that 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 they have that power that they should talk about what they want to see, that they should support things, but be very vocal about them. And I think that that's, you know, key. But also, if you have, if you are in a position of power in another industry, you also can play a role because if you have capital, you know, you can actually influence a lot of what's going on in the industry. And and the entertainment industry is behind other industries that have already made steps to diversify. And so, so you can pass that along if you have that knowledge or you can, you can get involved. And there's all these like really important um, organizations, Latin, Latinx organizations, such as NALIP, you know, that are doing great work. And, you know, the other ones are, like I said earlier, the Latino Film Institute and the National Hispanic Media Coalition. And, and, and people should get more involved with them, right? And find out what do they need? And if, you know, if they need donations, you know, it's like money talks, right? So, so these, these organizations are really helping people get, get in the door and creating those opportunities. And like I said, with the Youth Cinema Project, they're actually helping kids, you know, kind of get that experience. And so, so just support, donate, and be very vocal. Hey, that. You're muted again. <laughs> Sorry, everything she said. And then also um, two things. Number one, um, when you're watching, okay, so watching content, um, watch that if there's any Latino content, even if you're Mexican American and it's, you know, an Afro Latino or if you're Afro Latino and it's a Mexican American, please watch it. Just play it, walk out if you don't really want to watch it. And when you're on social media, maybe say, thank you, Netflix. Thank you that we love this show. I would also like to see. A, B, and C without, without cancel culture, without like beating up the show because you feel like you're not represented because no, there no one show can represent all of us at all. It's impossible. We come from different, forget about like all the different countries, but different parts of the, this country, right? Growing up on the East coast versus the West coast versus the middle, like our experiences are all unique and they're all human actually. Um, so I would say that like, just try really hard to be supportive of the shows that are on and, and tag those companies and let them know that you're watching and, hey, we'd also like to see this. So that can, you know, then that's positive feedback. And then um, number two, um, for films that go into theaters, when we're ready to go into theaters, like buy out theaters. Um, that's what, you know, and Ben will talk about it, but that's one of the, <laughs> the impetus for us getting together today is it's also like put your money where your mouth is, show up for theaters because on Monday morning after a film opens, that's, that's, all, that's what it's all about, who showed up. And when we don't show up to these films, unfortunately, it's just one more reason for them not to create films for us or not to let us tell our stories. Awesome, thank you. Uh, ben. Yeah, so for this specific space, obviously I, I, I work at the NALIP, right? The National Association of Latino Independent Producers. And one of the things that we found was innovation. And this is a, a tech conference, right? Innovation through data-driven tech solutions where we source IP, we source talent utilizing tech, you know? And also gut checking it with humans, with people that come from all the backgrounds that we covered. And so what we are able to do is partner up with the studios, right? In this specific uh, case, we launched a producer's pipeline incubator with um, the Walt Disney Company, Amlin Partners, Stars Lionsgate, and the Motion Picture Association of America, because we had a value proposition. And it was, what if we create those, the, the pipeline, a strong pipeline of the decision makers, the content buyers. But actually, a lot of this list, by the way, were sourced from people we're tracking over the years. And we were looking at how many folks have been assistants for, that's why we knew that some people were assistants for like eight years. How many of them have been there in the, in the bench, just ready to become the next generation, you know, 
senior VP at those. We need to transform those organizations from within and believe it. I think they welcome it. Why? Because that's also going to drive innovation from the studios. I always believe that you can work from both sides, right? Make sure that you hold the studios accountable, but you can also transform them from within. It could, it doesn't need to be, you know, mutually exclusive. So I think we can actually do that. So from that area, it's partnering up and actually demonstrating results. For me, most people are going to say, great, you guys did this, another program that was amazing, Lanex Cold Open. You went out there and bought theaters in conjunction with all these different organizations that were mentioned, right? With, with La Leaf, with the NHMC, with all these different sister orgs, and we bought out. And uh, by the way, La Collab and a lot of really amazing co collaborations. So it was 125 theaters all in. Think about that. And I'm pretty sure that we were one of the primary drivers, uh, specific theaters like in San Antonio or, or those markets that happen to have a lot of Mexican population and Mexican Americans, which folks that typically don't watch musicals and so on and so on. So that is important for us to invest in business and community solutions that can partner up to really drive Latinos at the forefront. We need to have those metrics because at the end, we could say 125 theaters generated this much box office and we actually can activate this areas of the country in a much more organic way. That's what I'm for. And I would love to be able to, I guess from the tech, for the folks who are listening from the tech community is, what if we were to make, it, make this open source? I think this would be better to open source it for all and then let people innovate utilizing a lot of these tools, we need to take it on the private sector too. Not just the nonprofits working on it, but a lot of private companies that can innovate. So I would love to be able to see more of those innovations out there. So, and let's link them up with private capital, you know, venture capital and angels. And I think we can make a really strong case for this. All right, Tim Cook, look at you. He's going for it. I, I like it. I, lo I, love, I love the idea. Uh, my, my final thought here, uh, is a challenge, not just to everyone that's out there that are in high positions, it's a challenge for myself to anyone. Um, you know, there's not a lot of us that make it in this space. And when we do, and I said this before, and this isn't just even for Latinos, for our black brothers and sisters, Asian, everyone that are really trying to see more representation. If you make it in the door, hold the door open behind you. Do not become comfortable being the only one in the room. And I think that is one of the most important things that I've, that I've learned. I've only been here a year and I don't, I'm the, one of the first in this type of space and I definitely don't want to be the last. I know there are better ones than me. I'm also aware of that, that there are better ones that can do this, but I want to hold that door open. So if we get multiple Clayton Davises, they're, they're upgraded versions, <laughs> more hair, you know, on their head, and uh, and just just can do do the work because they're because they're great at it and not just because they checked some boxes. So I, that's my kind of call to action for all of us is to make sure we're holding that door open for someone else to come on into. Uh, thank you for this conversation. I love hanging out with you guys. We need to bring food next time. I don't know why everyone's empty handed here today, uh, but we will come together and hopefully we'll see some really uh, good long lasting change. So thanks for this Thank conversation. You. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thanks for having us.